And at the noon, everyone, today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. He just had us a nice concert with some amazing songs that are songs that are uplifting and encourages us to know our God. Those who know their God shall be strong and do exploits. See, as believers in Christ, we don't really know who God is until we know who God is. So in order for us to live in victory, walk in victory, to be more than conquerors in Christ Jesus, then we have to know who God is and what he has promised us. And how can we learn God? How can we learn about God? We must first start uh, depending on him, trusting him. And once we begin to trust and depend on the Lord, he will begin to move in our lives. And he will begin to do things above and beyond that we could ever imagine. When tough times come, we trust him. And he pulls us through. Time and time again, when we trust in the Lord and we give our promise to him, we obey his will. Then he pulls us through. And then we know, we begin to know that the Lord is our savior, our deliverer, deliverer. And see, we know God. See, when he, he heals us from sickness, we learn that he is Jehovah Rapha. When he gives us the victory in, ba in battle, and we are flying the banner of victory. We know that he is Jehovah Nisi. When he provides for us, when we do not have, when we have a lack and the Lord makes a way out of no way, he provides for us. We know him as Jehovah Jireh. See, the many different names of God were known to the people of God by what the Lord did, what they trusted him for and what he did for them. And then they learned a new name of the Lord because of how he delivered them from whatever situation that they had, were in. Jehovah Nisa, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha. See, he delivered, God delivers. So they, that's how they know God. And the more we trust in God, with our faith and confidence in him, the more we know him. So when we look back over our life and we look at all the things that came upon us in our lives, Maybe financial problem, it may be marital problem, it may be friendship problem, it may be um, illness, sicknesses, whatever it, it, it was, the Lord brought us through it. He delivered us from it. it. Weren't always easy, but He did it for us. So when we look back on our life, we know the Lord has never let us down. So what that should do for us is, is it should we should all have a greater and a deeper relationship with God because of what he has done, because of what we have trusted him with and what he has done for us. So when the next thing come upon us, the next battle, the next test, test, the next trial, then we won't panic. We won't worry. We will look at that test, that trial. That, that battle with the eyes of what the Lord has already done for us. And we'll stand firm in who our God is and what he has done, what he has promised to do and what he will continue to do forevermore. So we won't be as those who don't have a God. See, we should go into battles and face battles totally different than those who don't know God. He has brought us through this. He's going to bring us through. He's brought us through that, so he's going to bring us through this. I heard the testimony of a believer of how he brought them through a particular situation. If he did it for them, he'd do it for me. I studied God's word. He told me that he will do what we need him to do for whatever particular battle that we're facing. So we trust his word. 
And when we live in that way, then we are really, we really will see God move in our lives. He will never let us down. And we see the world in a totally different way. See, one thing we must always understand that we are not fighting a battle of flesh and blood, no, not at all. See, our battle is a spiritual battle, it's spiritual warfare, not against flesh and blood. See, it's against spiritual wickedness in dark places, against principalities, rulers of the darkness of this world. See, that's who our battle is with. So we cannot look at our battles in a physical way, the way the world looks at it. Because if we do, we always look, it always looks to us like we're outnumbered. It always looks like, like it's too much for us. See, and then we lose hope, we lose faith, and we lose what God has promised us because we don't see it. See, we live in fear. We heard two songs that were very appropriate for our lesson today. In the middle, see, he says in the middle of whatever he's going through, he can praise God. In the middle, not at the end, in the middle. Because the battle is already won. The Lord, he knows that the Lord will deliver him. So in the middle of dealing with bad medical report or seeing more bills than money or whatever the situation may be. He, he has praise because he know who his God is and what he can do. And we should be the same. And the young lady, Ja'Kalen, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get it down, Ja'Kalen, I forgot her last name, Car, I think. Big, I don't play that several times. You, you guys may be a little tired of it, but I think that song is such a great song for us to hear because what she's singing about is just so what, what appropriate for the things that we face in life. He's bigger than it. We look at COVID-19. She said HIV. She said identity crisis. She said all the things. God is bigger than those things. Whatever they are, he is bigger. He can handle it. He can take care of it. God is sovereign over all things. So no matter what we face in life, no matter how it looks like we have are in a losing situation, a defeated situation, a dark situation. See, we serve a God that's bigger. And if God's on our side, then we have the advantage, no matter what it looks like. See, our strength is not in numbers. Our strength is who is on our team. And that's God. So that takes us into our lesson today. It's a great lesson for us to study and to remember. And our lesson title is, How Do You See Things? How do you see things? In this lesson, we will, one of the main topics will be vision, sight. See, blindness and sight. Blindness means you're living in darkness. You're living without God, the knowledge of God. You're looking at life without God. That's living in darkness. And living and having sight is living a life through the eyes with, with God in our, in our heart and in our spirit. And we see the, the world according to the, what God says. See, we see things um, spiritually. And that's how we should fight our battles. See, we have to look at the world spiritually, not with our earthly eyes, not with our God, not in the flesh. We have to look at our lives and situation with our spiritual eyes. And we see things, we'll see things that will help us fight this spiritual battle because it's not a battle against flesh and blood. So our lesson text is six, I'm sorry, second Kings, six chapter, verses eight. Through 23. Second Kings 6 chapter verses 8 through 23. 
with a special emphasis on, on verses 16 through 17. All right, I began reading the King James Version as we go over the text. Through our study, I will be using the, either the NIV or the Contemporary English Version, so be a little easier to our ears to understand it. All right, King James Version, verse 8. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, in such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not a such place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of, and said himself, and said himself there not once or twice. In other words, the man of God warned the king of where the Syrian armies would be and told him not to go to that particular area because the Syrian army was there to set a trap and try to sneak surprise and try to surprise him on a sneak attack. But the man of God warned the, the king of Israel several times, more than once, of the plans of the Syrian king. Verse 11 says, therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, Why will ye not shoot me, show me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, none, my lord, O king, but Elijah the prophet that is in Israel, tell the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. And he said, go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him saying, behold, he is in Dothan. Not Dothan, Alabama, but Dothan <laughs> in the Middle East. All right, he is in Dothan. Therefore he sent Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host. And they came by night and compassed the city about and surrounded the city. They came by night and surrounded the city. Verse 15, and when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, and hosts compassed the city both with horses and chariots. He woke up went out early and saw the city surrounded by horses and chariots of the enemy army. Verse, and he said, and his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? What shall we do? In other words, verse 16, and he answered, fear not. There it is. Fear not. We as believers should never fear. Why? Because we know who is on our side. And he answered, fear not. For they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elijah. And when they came down to him, Elijah prayed unto the Lord and said, smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elijah. So Elijah prayed for the enemy army to be blinded, and they were blinded according to the word of Elijah. Verse 19, and Elijah said unto them, this is not the way, neither is this the city. Follow me and I will bring you to the man whom you seek. But he led them to Samaria, that's the capital city of the northern tribe of Israel. He led them to Samaria. And it came to pass when they were come into Samaria, Elijah said, Lord, open the eyes of these men that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes and they saw. And behold, they were in the midst of Samaria. So this enemy army was in the middle of their enemy's territory. They were in the middle of Samaria. Smack dab in the middle of Samaria. So the Samarians had them, Samaria had them where they wanted them. Verse 21, and the king of Israel said unto Elijah, when he saw them, 
And the king of Israel said unto Elijah when he saw them, my father, shall I smite them? In other words, shall I kill them? Shall I smite them? And he answered, he said it twice. And he answered, thou shalt not smite them. Wouldest thou smite those whom thou hast taken captive with the sword and with the boat? Set bread and water before them that they may eat and drink and go to their master. And he prepared a great provision for them, a great feast for the soldiers, the enemy soldiers. And when they had eaten and drunk, he sent them away and they went to their masters. So the bands of Syria came no more into the land of Israel for a while in a way. After time went by, you see in the very next verse that they, they came back and attacked the Israelite people again. But for a while, the bands of Syria came no more into the land of Israel. What we have is a great story today that took place in the history of the people of Israel. We have God's chosen prophet, Elijah, one of the most, if not the most powerful prophet that ever lived. We know Elijah, who was the servant of Elijah, he told Elijah that he wanted double, a double portion of the spirit that he had. And Elijah told Elijah that if you will make it to, to see me leave here, then you, then you shall have that what you desire. So Elijah stuck with Elijah until he was called home on chariots of fire. And he dropped his cloak and he picked up the cloak. And by picking up the cloak, he answered, oh, Lord, where is the God of Elijah? And he smote the Jordan with the cloak and the Jordan parted. And he knew that he had the power of Elijah. In the same manner, in the same power that Elijah had. So now we see Elijah, the main prophet. In his older years, now Elijah has been through so many tests. He has trusted the Lord through, through so many situations in life that he know what the Lord would do for him. See, and that's where we have to know God. See, in order to get to know God, we have to start trusting his word and giving our problems and all our situations to him and watch how he deals with things and helps us and protects us and guides us. See, we realize he's closer than a brother. See, than any friend. And he will deliver us. And with that knowledge of God, then we too become a strong, strong, testimony to who God is. So when the enemy comes upon us, when life comes to test us, when we become persecuted in this world, see, then we will not be confused, confounded, scared, worried. No, we will depend on what has brought us to where we are today, on the God that has delivered us time and time again. Do you know God? Do you know God? See, if you don't know God, then you need, you need to get to know God. And again, I will say one more time, how do you get to know God? You need to trust him with your life. Trust him with your problems. Give it to him and obey him and believe in him and watch him deliver you, see you through. See, get to know God. So we see the prophet, the mighty prophet now in, in Israel. Now we got to understand the condition that Israel was in. This is the Northern kingdom. The Northern kingdom has split from the Southern kingdom. We know King, under King Saul, the, the nation of Israel was one nation. Under King David, the nation of Israel was one nation. 
under King Solomon, the nation of Israel was one nation. But when King Solomon died, the nation split under his son, under his son. And there became the Northern Kingdom, which was 10 tribes, and the Southern Kingdom, which were two tribes, Benjamin and Judah. In the Southern Kingdom, there was the city of Jerusalem. This is the capital city. This is where the temple was. This is where they, the presence of God was in Jerusalem. And this is where they would serve God. But see, in the Northern Kingdom, Jerusalem was not in the northern kingdom. And we know our Old Testament, Old Testament scripture, they had to go to the city of Jerusalem to celebrate important days throughout the year. Passover, uh, uh, many other festivals throughout the year. But the king of Israel did not want his people to continue to go to Jerusalem because guess what? They go to Jerusalem, they're going to begin to make it their home. They begin, he will begin to lose. They begin to lose more of their people. So what did they do? They, they, they built them a temple of their own in the capital city of northern Israel in Samaria. This is where they worship God. Now the kings of the northern tribe, the kings of Israel, which was, was it called were very bad kings. Now, the southern kingdom also had bad kings, but the northern king kingdom kings were just bad from the start. There's nothing but bad, 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 all the way down. So we see God's prophet, Elisha, now protecting God's people. See, God always sends help to his people. He always sends protection to his people. And see, we have protection today. See, the protection we have is through Christ Jesus. He sends the Holy Spirit. As our guide. To help us, to guide us, to, to, to give us what we need to, to handle what we are facing. But at this time, it was his prophets. And even though the kings were bad in Israel, the Lord and, and through Elijah continued to show his grace and save and protect his people. At this time, the northern kingdom was very weak because of their worship of idolatry, because of them living in sin. And don't be fooled. We are all at our weakest point when we are walking and living in sin. When we're doing whatever we want to do upon this sun, when we're living in sin, we are at our weakest point. And at this time, when the world around you, when Satan around you and the world and, and his demons and his, and his imps and all this, this fallen world sees you at your weakest point, they're going to attack you. So the, the Syrian army began to send raids into Israel, attacking his people, raiding their cities and stealing their goods and their resources. So Elijah began to help the army and the king of Israel. When the Syrian king would plot and plan to ambush God's people, he would send, Elijah would, would send a word to the king, telling them where the Syrian armies were and to not go that way, to go another way. And he would do this each and every time that the Syrian army had plotted an ambush to attack God's people. God would send Elijah, through Elijah, was sent message to the king of Israel to not go in this particular direction because the Syrian army is waiting for you. And they will go, they will heed to the word of God, to the word of Elijah, and go in a different direction. 
and they will be saved. So this really began to frustrate the king of Syria. He plotted and planned so carefully to attack God's people. But each and every time, no matter how careful he plotted, God would uh, be, God's people would be prepared and outsmart the king of Syria. So it got so bad that the king of Syria lined up all the soldiers of Syria, just lined them up and said, which one of you are traitors? Which one of you are on the side of Israel? See, which one of you are on the side of Israel? He felt like somebody had to be a traitor. Somebody had to be telling the Israelite, the Israelite army what their plans were for them to continue to be able to uh, outsmart, outtrick, and not go the way in which the Syrian army had planned on ambushing them. Well, see, what we have to understand is nothing that the enemy plans against us is unknown to God. See, can't nobody plan a spy like God can plan a spy. We think the CIA and the FBI is good by tapping these mobile phones and, and have all these kind of special services to hear and figure out things, blah, blah, blah. But nobody can could know and hear and have information like God can. So we should not worry about what our enemies are plotting and planning against us. See, God here, he hears, it, and guess what? He will reveal to us how to live our life. We just have to obey. The one good thing that the army of Israel did, they listened to Elijah. Elijah. And every time they listened to Elijah, they were successful in outsmarting the enemy armies. And we would listen to our, our intel source. See, we got an intel source. And that's the Holy Spirit. When we learn to live by the Holy Spirit and hear the Holy Spirit and walk in the Spirit, then we, we too can be guided away from danger and the enemy's plans. See, we may never know it, but many times when we walk and live in the Spirit and we do things out of the Spirit and not out of the flesh, then we have avoided so many traps that may have been set to bring us down to defeat us but the fact that we walked in the spirit see we are new creatures old things are passed away we stopped doing the old things that we used to do and start going and living in another way now the enemy plans are being spoiled so what does the enemy do? They want to know who in the world is telling God's people, the Israelite army, the plans that we are have against them. See? And the world is the same way. When they see somebody who's walking in a different direction, they change their life. What do the, the enemies do? They try to figure out what is he doing to make him not want to run the streets and do the things with us like he used to do? What's making him want to go do right and not do what we what we always been doing? And when they try to find out, they're going to persecute. They want to eliminate that problem. And that's what Satan does in this world. When, when they find out you, any friend could be teaching, ministering, preaching, mentoring, helping someone come out of a life that they've been living in. The people that they have been running with all of a sudden wants to know who is giving you this information? Who is telling you these things? Many times it can be your parents, especially your parents are living ungodly lives and you are living ungodly life with them. And now you begin to do, not do the things that they are doing. And they wonder well, who, who you been talking to? Who you been running into? So they can attack, persecute, or downplay whatever it is that that person, God's person, been putting in, putting into your head and your spirit. 
But we as believers must continue to trust in God's word and his spirit and walk in that way. And by doing so, he will send us ways in which we are fully protected. We will go in direction where we are fully protected. So we don't have to worry about tomorrow. We don't have to worry about what the enemy is plotting and planning. We don't have to spend our time thinking about the enemy. All we got to do is continue to keep our eyes on the Lord, continue to focus on doing what he wants us to do, and be obedient to the spirit that lives in us. Live in the spirit, not the flesh. And not according to our old ways. See? So, the king says, look at what the king of Syria says. As we go um, into verse 9. Verse 10. Then we go down to verse 11, which we, we've discussed. Verse 11 says, This enraged the king of Aram. See, that's serious. He summoned his officers and demanded of them, Tell me which of us is on the side of the king of Israel. Look at what he answered. None of us, my lord, the king, said one of his officers. But Elijah, the prophet who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the very words you speak in your bedroom. See, the man tells him, look, they got Elijah on his side. See, Elijah represent the presence of God. So in other words, he's saying they got God on their side. So to testify about the believers today, he said that they got the spirit in them. They got the Holy Spirit in them. They got the spirit. They got Jesus in them. So that's what they will be saying. And he tells them how to act and which way to go and what things to do. See, of all things, no matter what it is. And look what he said. Go find out where he is, the king ordered, so I can send men and capture him. The report came back. He is in Dothan. Now, then he sent horses and chariots and a strong force there. Now, what's kind of facetious and silly and very dumb of the king of Aram. If the Lord was telling him, Elijah knew all the things that they had said secretly in their bedrooms or their plots and their plan to destroy Israel, why wouldn't they think the Lord would also tell them, <laughs> tell Elijah when they came after him? You see what I mean? If the Lord, the Lord, if, you, you know, how facetious is that? So we're not really dealing with a very intelligent king of Aram. Why wouldn't he know of his plan to come and capture him? See, we have to understand and we have to know that in Elijah. Elijah knew their plan. So Elijah knew that they were coming after him. And see, what we need to understand, just like Elijah, just like I've said a couple of times already, we need to know that there will be times in our life that will test us. That will test us. Circumstances in life sometimes will test us. We need to be aware of it. But when they come, we need to already be, we shouldn't even, nothing to run from, nothing to be scared of, nothing to be, to, to duck it. We, we, we got to, we know who God is. See? So he says, Find out where he is. They found out he is in Dothan. Now, the other, other time Dothan was mentioned, I think it was Genesis 27 and 17. I, mean, I could be wrong, but it's Genesis 27 chapter. Anyway, it was in the life of another one of God's people, and that was Joshua. Again, we're not talking about Dothan, Alabama. Last time Dothan was mentioned was in Genesis, in the life of Joshua. See, Dothan means duplicity, hypocr hypocrisy, double-minded, double-faced, two-faced, all right? Trickery, deceit. That's what Dothan means in the Hebrew language. And both times in the Bible, the two times that Dothan was mentioned, it was trickery, deceit, and hypocrisy that took place in that city. See? Josh, Joshua brother, I'm sorry, not Joshua, Joseph brothers. When they saw J uh, Joseph coming to look for them, 
following his, his father's orders. As they saw him coming into, coming down to see them and find them and be with them, they began to plot against him. Let's look at that dreamer coming down. Let's capture him and sell him and see what becomes of his dreams. So his brothers tricked Joseph and sold him into slavery down into Egypt. And we see here now, again, when Dalton is mentioned, where the king of Aram is trying to trap, to trap for Elijah. But notice the setting of the trap. This is very important, very important point. Why would they say it? Because it means something. It says in verse 13, and he said, go and spy. Let's go down to verse 14. Therefore sent he thither, we'll go into the NIV. Then he sent horses and chariots and a strong force there. All right. He sent his best soldiers, horses and chariots. See, horses and chariots, that, that's a sign of force, overpowering force. That's a sign not only to intimidate, but to overpower chariots and, and horses, a strong force there. And look what else, they went what? By night and are surrounded the city. See that point is there for a reason. They went by night. Many times the devil's plans are carried out at night. They carry out in the midst of darkness. See. See. At night. So many times criminals, when do they come out? At night. See. In the natural, you can't see well at night. So you can be, the enemy can attack you and surprise you at night. But see, not God's people. See, not God's people. See, we look, we think about examples in the Bible. Judas, he betrayed the Lord and the Garden of Gethsemane when? At night with a kiss. And then right after that, at night, they led Jesus into the courtroom of Caiaphas, the high priest. Then to uh, <clears throat> Pilate, Herod, I'm sorry, then the Pilate, then back to Caiaphas. All this took place at night. See, so secretly doing these things. And Jesus said to them, when I was with you daily in the temple, in other words, in the day, neither you did anything to me. Now you stretch forward your hand against me at night. You see what I'm saying? It says in 1 Thessalonians 5th chapter, verses 5 through 7, you are all children of the light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. In other words, folks do they dirt at night. Verse John 3 and 19 says, and this is the Condem, 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 condemnation that light is coming to the world. The, that light is coming to the world. That's Jesus. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Why did they light, like the light? Because the, their deeds were evil. And their deeds could be seen easily. The evilness of their deeds could be seen easily at night. See, what we have to know is when we walk and live in the spirit, then we are children of the day. And no matter what goes on, we live in the day. So we can see the plans of our enemy. Because we're looking at things through the eyes of the spirit. But look what it says 
in the next verse. But early, I love that. But early in the morning, see, the servant went out. What I have, want us to understand is when we when we are walking and living in the spirit, we're doing things for God. We don't sleep all day. We don't sleep half the day away, let half the day go by before we get up and do. We jump up early. See, it says in the Bible many times, Jesus woke up early in the morning. See, life is precious. If you're sleeping late every day, all the time, you're wasting a large percentage of your life sleeping. See, go, go to bed at night when all the evil is going on. Don't, don't stay up all night <laughs> moving around at night in the darkness. He woke up early. Early. God's people must move early. So much we can do for God by starting our days off early. Now, when the servant of the man of God, verse 15, got up and went out early the next morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. In other words, he saw what had taken what they had done at night. It was a surprise attack. A surprise attack. And not just any attack. He saw the most intimidating thing you can see in your life. And what we have to do is relate that to our life. See, when the, the enemy comes upon us to attack us, he comes to attack us with the most intimidating thing that he can find. Job, see, our enemy is strategic. He just doesn't threaten us with stuff that won't bother us. He threatens us with stuff that would really bother us or scare us and intimidate us. He's very strategic. It says in the book of Job, that which I feared has come upon me. See, Satan didn't, didn't give, don't come upon us with stuff we don't fear. If we're not afraid of, of sickness, then he won't give us sickness to try to make us fear or doubt or, or, or fall short. He will give whatever we are, we're afraid of, just say, uh, I don't know, flying or something, I don't, whatever fear, all right? Then he will attack us there. That which I feared has come upon me. So when the servant looked and saw the army, he saw it with eyes of the flesh. Why do I know he saw with eyes of the flesh? Because he said, he saw he was surrounded. He said, oh, no, my Lord, what shall we do? The servant asked. What was he? Verse 16 tells us what he was. He was afraid. Elijah said and answered, fear not. Don't be afraid. The prophet answered. See, he is afraid. And Elijah is confident. Elijah is sitting there just as confident and unbothered. Why? See, Elijah knew they was coming already. He wasn't even flustered. He wasn't even. He knew where they was going to be. The spirit knew he was going to be attacked. He already know what to do. And that is trust the Lord. The Lord is with me. He know it. Why? Do we know that's how Elijah's think? Because look at what he says next. See, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. See, Elijah is looking at this enemy, not with the eyes of man, of his own eye, or with his own energy, or with his own might, or what he can handle compared to what he was facing. No, he looked at what he was facing with the power and the might and the promises of God. So what he was facing was nothing compared to his God. And that's where we have to look at things when they come upon us, everybody. We have to look at it with not in our might, but in God's might. 
See, when we when they say the sickness or this such and such, or this and that, and this and that, and this and that, we don't look at it with our strength, but we look at it with God's might. So we can say those who are with us are more than those who are with them. That is not a physical, that is spiritual battle. Knowing the God that's on our side. See, we got to know the God that's on our side. And look what Elijah did. And this is what we need to do when things come upon us. It says, and Elijah prayed. He prayed. And in his prayer, he said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. Open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. And when he prayed that prayer, then the Lord opened the servant's eyes. Now the servant is not looking with, with, with his eyes, but now he's looking with the eyes of the Lord. See, with God's promises, God's power, God's might, God's spirit. And now he sees the spiritual. What does he see? And what he sees is what we need to always remember. What he sees is what we need to always remember. All right? And Elijah prayed, and he says, then the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked, and he saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elijah. So what he saw was that inside of the Syrian army was a greater army that had him and Elijah surrounded. It was an army of horses and chariots of fire, a stronger army, a mightier army than that of the Syrian army. And they had Elijah and the servant surrounded and protected from all the forces of the enemy. And see, that is shouting news right there. That is the gospel. Because what that tells us is that we have a God on our side that has us surrounded. So when all these circumstances, these tough circumstances, and these trials and tests come upon us, we have a, a, a God, we have an army, we have a nation of angels surrounding us, protecting us from what has come upon us in our life. What we have to do is have trust like Elijah to know that our God is present. And he is greater than that which we are facing. Like the song, songs we heard today, we are in the middle, see? And what we're in the middle, we're in the middle and what we have is bigger. See, what we have is bigger. So when we look at the things that come upon us, we need to stop looking with our might and our strength or according to what happened. Well, everybody else that had this or went through this, they died or they didn't make it or they, they, they got fired or they lost this and they lost their house. They lost their, what, what happened to everybody else and what happened, that's them. They may not know God like you know God. Everybody that say they know God don't know God. I'm sure the servant that worked with Elijah knew God, but he didn't know God like Elijah knew God. He didn't know God. He knew of God. But see, after this day, that servant knew God. He knew the protection that God brings. He knew God. See, we have to know God. So that in the midst of tests, trials, tough circumstances, we are, we will not fear. We will be at peace and comfort and safety, trusting in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. See, just like when they came to arrest Jesus, and we talked about it last week in the Garden of Gethsemane, and Peter cut the ear off of the soldier, and God told him, no, Peter, don't do that. 
if I wanted to fight them, I could call down uh, 12 legion of angels just like that. They're watching over me just like that. See? No, that's not how we fight this fight. See, not with our own strength and might. No. So as we go out today, as we finish and conclude this message, what I want from you to take away from this message is I want you to see. What do you see? I want you to look at your life and your tests and your obstacles and all the things that you have to face in your life, not with your eyes or the eyes of this world, but look at it with the eyes of God. Spiritual. So this is a spiritual battle. And then you will know. You are surrounded. What are you surrounded by? Could be chariots of fire. What are the chariots of fire? See, it's God's word. God's word. He that is in me is stronger than he that in, is in the, the, the he that's in the world. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. My God shall supply all my need through his, through his riches and glory. See, those are the things that we have to know and believe in and trust in. And when we're believing and trusting in those things, that's an army around us. See, that protects us. That does not, that doesn't allow what has come upon us to overtake us. See, that's our army around us. It says in Psalms 34 and seven, if you honor the Lord, his angel will protect you, my Lord. They ain't just say that because it just sounds good to say. That's true. See, if you got to recognize, they was like a wheel. It was like a wheel in the middle of a wheel. It was a circle inside of a bigger circle. A wheel in the middle of a wheel. That was, was how Ezekiel described the Lord, his vision of the Lord. See, we got to look at Joshua. See, Joshua and Caleb, when they looked at the promised land against the obstacles that they had to face at the mighty warriors and the tall, the giant, they didn't look at it in their strength, but they looked at it with God's strength. And they say, surely we can take the land. The, the other 10 looked at it with their strength. We look like grasshoppers in their eyes. See, they were defeated. They didn't make it to the promised land. But the two that saw it with the power of the Lord, with God on their side as a part of their army, they said, we surely can take the land. We look at a little 12-year-old, 12 to 17-year-old kid, little ruddy kid that was taking his brother some lunch. And there's still a giant a man of war, a giant, who was threatening the armies of the living God. And he said that surely this uncircumcised giant shall not defeat the armies of the living God. See, when he stood up to fight that giant, he stood up to fight that giant in his strength. He stood up to fight that giant upon the strength and the reputation and his knowledge of God. See, he knew God. How do we know he we know he knew God? Because he said, What? My God bought me through the victory with the lion in the bow. See, he bought, he looked back on what the, the, the Lord had bought him through. So he knew God. He said, if, he, if the Lord bought me through that, he's gonna bring me through this. I'm not scared of this unphilistine job. And that's the same spirit and knowledge we have to have as we go out and face this world. Because we all will be tested, no matter how good we live. And how great we are, how much we stand for the Lord. We will be tested because we live in a fallen world. But God's grace is sufficient. Our God is bigger. And we're right in the middle of his protection. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Lord, we come to you today, Lord. Thank you for your word today, Lord. We pray that your word find fertile ground, Lord. We pray that we, as believers in Christ, not see with the flesh or with our earthly uh, sight, but Lord, allow us to see spiritually, the Lord. Allow us to see with, in the spirit and know that you have us surrounded. 
Lord, and then we are protected from all, all the things of the devil. See, put on the whole armor of God. So we'll be protected, what, from the wiles of the devil. Lord, we are protected by your word. And the word is our weapon, is our sword of truth. See, we are protected. So, Lord, let us stand firmly without fear. Let us let's go and do the things that you will have us to do. Let us live the life that you have planned for us to live. Let us walk without fear. Let us be bold and living for God. Lord, but let us be humble enough to know that it's all you and not us, dear Lord. We will be sure to give you all the credit and the glory. Lord, I pray right now for healing on the bodies of those who are sick right now, Lord. And if you heal their bodies, Lord, you, you know what we also come and pray for each and every time. We also ask that you heal their spirit as well so we all can be made whole. Lord, I pray these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, everybody. I'd like to thank you for joining in on our weekly I Believe Bible study. Pray that something is said that blesses your walk in Christ. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. And be blessed, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining today. Um, Amen, Reverend Evans. Thank you so much, Ms. Eve, for joining in today. God bless. Everyone, you have a blessed week. Have a safe Labor Day. And uh, go Hornets. <laughs> I love Amen. It. Thank you, D. Yes, go Hornets. I love saying that. I got, I'm going to get used to it. It's going to take me long. <laughs> at the end of the day do you bleed black and gold because you're right family. that's right I, am an alumni. I tell people i am an alumni now Look, right uh, and you I'm are alumni uh -huh. there, so i am i'm official i tell people don't don't get it twisted i am official I'm that's official. right, that's right. <laughs> have a good night have a good night thank y'all so much for joining god bless <laughs>